The story begins with the departure of the young lady they called Princess, who had asked her grandmother. She had to discover a new world, otherwise she wouldn't return. We move on to the second protagonist, Yero, who, while at his father's funeral, promised his brothers that he would take care of everything from now on. One day he woke up and realized he hadn't finished the manga manuscript. Meanwhile, in the dining room that seemed to be shared with other people, his brothers were eating what Ichiro always cooked a day before to just heat it up. Their names were Maki and Fumio, accompanied by Chibi, their cousin. With her, they went to bring breakfast to their brother, who didn't look well at all and was rather worried because the manga delivery date was approaching and he still didn't have an assistant. He had trouble finding someone who could cut the drawings on paper, but tried not to worry his brothers. He took all the responsibility on his hands literally because he graduated and debuted as a mangaka. However, some time after, his father died, and he had to make a living as a mangaka, in addition to the income from the rents of the house his father left them. His dream was to send his brothers to university, so he worked hard. Suddenly, he was called to inform him that they had found an assistant for him. When his brothers went to school with Chibi, he went to meet his assistant, who they said was good at copying and making backgrounds, and Cairo was satisfied with her help. When he arrived where she should be, she turned out to be the same princess from that island she had left. Her name was Shori. He still didn't believe she was his assistant, and she told him not to mention his mangaka pseudonym and better to call him Ichiro only. Because if people find out who he is, his brothers would be embarrassed. And once they introduced themselves, he took her to his apartment. How quickly things escalated, obviously referring to having an assistant now, and took her to start working, she didn't mind. Although before she started, she gave him a sweater so she wouldn't dirty the elegant dress she had on, and then sent her to make the manga frames and backgrounds. Cairo was surprised because she had done it very well, and when he found out it was her first job, she told him she learned to draw manga from a book that taught you how. He couldn't believe he was so lucky because thanks to Shori's efficiency, the manuscript would be delivered on time. And when his brothers returned from school, Maki met Shori and was surprised at how beautiful she was. Besides, she noticed that her brother had worked with her without resting, so they took ten minutes. Maki showed her around the house, or rather the condominium, where they had common areas shared with many people, such as a nail artist and office workers, and also Chibi and the landlord, who was in charge of collecting the rents. That was Ichiro. Once he showed her around the place, as well as the room where she would stay to sleep, when the menu they ordered arrived, Shiro ate alone in her room, and when she returned to work, she went to prepare some tea instead of Ichiro. There, she met her brothers, who told her he didn't know how to ask for help at work and that his dream was to send them to university. Upon hearing that, Shori said something uncommon, that although they didn't have telepathy, they communicated very well, but Maki didn't take it seriously because she was sleepy and when she returned to Ichiro. She refused to rest until she finished the last task she had. And so they wouldn't fall asleep, Shori told them about her. She was 19 years old, and before, she hadn't read manga until she reached that age. And before, she hadn't read manga until she reached that age. Ichiro thought it was his parents' decision, and, well, it had something to do with it. She told him that her grandmother had a library that only she was allowed to enter, and among all the books was his manga, which she found to be a complete fantasy. It was a romance manga that fought against the fate of uniting and separating couples, but with what they call love, all problems can be overcome, and that's what she loved. When finally everyone went to sleep, the next day they got up early and continued finishing the manuscript. And even though they spent the whole day advancing it, at night Shirori wanted to keep working. It seems she's a fan of Toji, but there was a problem when Ichiro, upon counting the pages of the manuscript, noticed one was missing. He found it, but it wasn't complete. Literally, it was missing almost everything from that sketch. So if he did it alone, maybe he wouldn't finish, but he didn't want her to stay up all night working alone. However, Shirori realized there were problems, and she told him she didn't mind continuing to work. He kept thinking that if he didn't finish on time this month, he wouldn't get paid, and that would indeed be a problem. He remembered Maki's words to do well as a mangaka and didn't want to leave this page half-painted. So he asked Shirori for help, who accepted, and they stayed up all night so that by morning it would be ready, and he just had to deliver the copy by mail. But at that moment, not having slept all night, he fell asleep for a few seconds, and when he woke up, he saw that Shirori was also asleep, and he noticed that she had something stuck to her. He thought it was a sharp object, but when he tried to remove it, he pricked himself with what wasn't what he thought, but something like a bee sting, and he ended up in an illusion, which woke her up, and she told him they were connected through her spine, which meant they had to spend their lives together. Wow, what a dramatic twist. This was normal in her land, but he didn't think he would touch her while she was asleep. 
Ichiro explained that it was all a misunderstanding because he thought he had a sharp object, and she understood that he wanted to help her. So she thanked him, and he felt a little uncomfortable about the situation. At that moment, she started saying that they should get to know each other better, but he already knew her a little from the time she had been here. What Shirori then believed touching meant explained that there was mutual trust. He was like, what are you telling me? She explained that she was the princess of the shooting star village and didn't want to marry because of this accident. So she asked him to start as boyfriends. He was surprised by what she said and didn't agree with this. As she said, they were strangers to each other, but she told him it wasn't like that since she saw his art in a manga, she practiced copying the drawing, and you could say she knew his work, which made her his fan. But this still seemed strange to him, and they agreed to start as friends. She told him she had come from her village after wandering through space, and he didn't understand what she was talking about and considered her crazy. Also, in her land, she had to marry whoever she connected with through her spine, something like a family tradition, but since she read his manga, she defied that and left her home. Now her goal was to reach love with him, who told her it didn't make sense if her plan was not to follow the tradition, so they didn't have to force a romance. Also, she should choose the right person because there's also the option of not falling in love or that he already has a partner, which he doesn't, but it never hurts to clarify it. And although he wanted to drop the subject, he couldn't because he had been chosen. The conversation was interrupted because someone was knocking on the door. It was his editor who was talking to him while reviewing the manuscript and told him there was a horror movie marathon that even he could endure, except when he said they were about rituals and traditions. He made him remember what happened with Shirori, and before his editor left, he told him he could draw a color page in the next chapter, but now to take the day off. Meanwhile, Shirori returned home, and after she left, Maki found her brother with a fever, and when she sent him a message, Fumi replied saying he was very sick now, and he would deposit his pay later. But upon receiving the message, she returned and apologized because this was because she distanced herself from him. As proof, she told him that now that he was here, he surely felt better, and as they were engaged, they couldn't separate, or he would receive a punishment. That was so he would protect her, and she told him they couldn't command over the great will of the stars. Again, he didn't understand anything, and to be on the same level, she also laid down, and they talked about what Maki said that he wasn't working on what he wanted. She explained to her that he was rejected for shonen manga, but was told he had a vocation for shoujo manga, which didn't bother him because he was going the way where he did what he wanted and what he should. Shirori noticed that he chose the best option for everyone, and he had never carried any burden. He also didn't like to impose burdens and punishments on others, and she never believed in sharing love without controlling the other person. When she saw a drawing she liked in his illustration book, although Ichiro felt motivated to keep drawing, he couldn't because he felt tired. So he repeated what she said, that if he took her hand, his punishment would decrease more, and since it was true, he ended up doing it, and feeling much better, he knew that she always told the truth, and then he fell asleep. When he woke up, he looked for Shirori, who, upon seeing the sign saying the room was for rent, said she would move because a good relationship starts with friendship. After that, she helped him with the chores he had as the condominium owner, and surely, he wanted to ask her if he could break this union somehow. She told him she didn't know, but she already sent her subordinate to find out. And when he finished helping with the garden, he asked if he could accompany her shopping. When they went to the mall together, she tried on some dresses the same color as hers and asked him what he thought. Like any man, he didn't see the difference, at least with dresses of the same color, because when she wore a uniform, she did look different. She always wanted to try something like this because in her village, she had never been able to. Then they went to a magazine store where Shirori ended up taking several books, and then they went to a cafeteria where before eating, she communicated with her village through her mind, but she couldn't in that place because it was too far. Anyone would say she's crazy, but Ichiro had already gotten used to her madness. Besides, he looked up the island she mentioned, and she didn't recognize it anywhere on this page. But according to legend, there was a shooting star that was crying, and a girl saw it, and when she approached to ask why it was worried, the star dropped one of its tears, and she understood what it felt and told the others on the island, with whom she also shared her tears. She knew the star felt lonely, but after that, the star returned to its place and became smaller until it disappeared. But now, people felt what it felt, and it didn't feel the same as before. But that would be the version told to children. The truth was that a meteorite fell, and a parasite entered them. It's incredible how things change. Even though this was about coexistence and not parasitism, his grandmother had told him all kinds of stories, basically manga stories like the typical ones about students where the student council had a lot of authority. And since he discovered those stories, he started drawing. 
Even though his grandmother had already passed away and she was the only one who supported her in leaving the island, Ichiro then thought that his bond with her was a nuisance and he didn't exactly want to eliminate this accident before getting romantically involved with her. So he came up with the idea that after doing so, she would help him find a better partner. And as he said this suddenly, he went to the bathroom because he felt something strange while talking. And when he returned to the table, he saw that some guys were talking to her about manga supposedly because they liked it. And it wasn't quite like that. Let's say these guys were trying to hit on her. So he took his things. And when he took her arm to leave, something happened with their bond. He suddenly started bleeding, and when they left the cafeteria, she realized that she was the cause of the sneezing and the bleeding. There was another punishment for forcibly taking her, so she felt guilty for not realizing that the guys had other intentions and regretted leaving the island. But since he noticed that she had been practicing a lot to be good at making manga, he didn't want her to feel that way for helping him with that. Shirori noticed at that moment that he was crying. He didn't believe that until she showed him by touching his cheeks. Then he suddenly thought he should annul this bond. But before that, he wanted to help her settle in here and learn the rules for interacting with her. So when they returned home, Shirori tried on the clothes she had bought, and Maki said they had become good friends since they went out together, and she was glad to hear that he wanted to know more about her, which of course surprised her brothers. The fact that she was moving past a night reading manga, and it was about a shonen manga about a master with his disciple, and how their bonds were very unbreakable. She found it exciting, but now they would begin to experiment with how far they could distance themselves without him receiving a punishment. They tried going on a train as far as they could, and the only thing he felt was an unpleasant sensation because she felt it when she went on the train full on. They noticed that he felt the same thing as her, and they tried physical contact because last time he was very affected by forcing her, and they took examples from a shoujo manga of what they could try. One of them was to come from behind and cover his eyes out of nowhere, but nothing happened, although he only felt nervous when she did it, and when they tried the next scene, which was to grab her hair and say what the character in the manga said, she found it funny because they had already agreed on it. They moved on to another scene from the manga where he cornered her against the wall, and he did it without thinking that when they were like that, her brothers would enter the room, and they thought they were doing something not suitable for children. But they resolved the misunderstanding by saying that it was an experiment. At least her brothers believed him, and as there were already many experiments for today, they left it for the moment. Then he received a call from his editor who talked to him about the color page he asked for and also about the direction his shoujo manga was taking. It was okay for him to try to include some fights in the manga, but the readers wanted to see how the relationship between the protagonists developed. This made him feel more or less bad because he wanted to be both shonen and shoujo, but seeing that it didn't work out, he became pensive and a little defeated which led him to stop working for a moment and clean his room until Shirori came to tell him that she had already made the list of what she would like to do. The first thing was to pay her respects for letting her live here. She also let him choose between the gifts she had, and she would do the same with the other tenants. Although they weren't there in the morning, and Ichiro suggested that she write a letter and leave it along with the gift in the mailbox for them to pick up. The first one to arrive and who received Shirori was Chibi, who, upon seeing that she didn't know how to give the gifts to the other tenants, told her what each of them might like. And when she offered to help with that, she asked her to be friends, and then, since she hadn't given a letter to Ichiro, she gave it to him just after meeting him the next morning. After the other tenants received the letter and gifts from Shirori, they left a message for her in the dining room, thanking her for the gifts. And that day, Momoka also arrived, bringing some food for everyone. She was Ichiro's childhood friend, and you know what happens with childhood friends, they never win, although she was already married to Morikoni, Ichiro's editor, and she was also the author of the shonen manga that Shirori read the other day. So she was very excited to meet her. Momoka asked her what kind of manga she drew, but she still didn't have a story and was new to this, so she asked if she could be her assistant. The problem, apart from having several assistants, was that they all worked digitally, something Shirori didn't know how to do. Momoko offered to give her a graphic tablet with which to draw digitally, and which she no longer used, because she loved manga and wanted to see more. That's why she used to be Ichiro's teacher, who also helped him choose his mangaka name, as she basically took her name as inspiration. After Momoka's visit ended, and she only came to cheer him up at Maki's request, which she succeeded in doing because now he was really going to give it his all. Only he felt a sensation that Shirori felt, and he asked her what was wrong. She told him that she felt something in her chest when she thought of Momoka and him, Obviously, he thought she was jealous, and that meant she felt something for him. So, not knowing what to say, she told him that she loved him, and it felt nice when she said it. That's why she left before he could say anything, and she understood that this was love, something she didn't have as a child, while Ichiro, after what happened, couldn't concentrate on his shoujo plot, and when his brothers asked if they were going to the zoo, 
He said yes, but the problem was that it was raining, which was very disappointing for Maki. But according to her, there was no problem staying at home and Ichiro continued working. Once again, it was difficult for him to think about how to continue his shoujo plot, and he remembered what happened yesterday with Shirori, something he couldn't forget and was tormenting him. On the other hand, Shirori had been thinking until she got the graphic tablet, she would continue practicing her drawing, and when she started drawing, Ichiro's face came out instinctively. She had been drawing him for a while out of nowhere, and she was happy because she recognized what love was, and the reason she helped him so much was because she was in love with him. Remembering the date they had and the experiments they did yesterday, saying she should have enjoyed those moments more, only now she had confessed, and she couldn't do what the Japanese like to do, wait three seasons to say it. And now she didn't know what to do or how to see him, since he had touched her spine that same day. They met in the hallway. She noticed that his brothers weren't entirely happy, and she explained that they couldn't go to the zoo because of the bad weather, so she offered to play with them to entertain them, something that would leave him more at ease. And when he returned to his room, he didn't feel relieved because it was hard for him to be in front of her because of what happened, and he wondered if yesterday's events would be left as if nothing had happened. She thought the same thing, but the important thing now was to play with her brothers, and when she saw that Maki had some tarot cards to predict luck, she asked if she could read hers. And when Ichiro went to look for them after they had progressed with their work, he saw that they were downcast, and what happened was that when she tried to predict her luck, Shirori ended up breaking a card. Well, this proved that he is bad luck, so those cards really worked. In my opinion, Maki told Shirori not to take what happened too seriously, and although Ichiro told her she could make others, she didn't want to because she liked the ones she had made, and if she wanted to make some, she should take them from the versions of a riddle book by her favorite author. So Shirori asked her what her name was, and as soon as she gave it to her, she went to fetch it since today she was also passing by the library and just wanted them to have a splendid day, so they waited for her to return with the cards ready. Apart from that, Maki told her brother that if he was worried, he could look for her, so that's what he did. He went to the library asking that nothing had happened to her, and when he found her, she told him she found the book her brothers wanted, but she had forgotten the book she went to the library for, and she said she had never been so careless, which made him laugh because he hadn't seen her that way. Well, I'm already smelling a bit of love around here. When they returned home together, Ichiro was drawing the tarot cards that Maki chose from the book they brought, which turned out well, and he wanted to please her by reading the fortune to make it look more realistic. Shori set up a fortune-telling stand and dressed Maki up as a fortune teller. She really looked like one, but she said this was a hobby for adults. She wanted to have a stable job, something Ichiro believed if she wanted to do it. Well, more or less, since they heard that he wanted to take them to college. Only he clarified that they could be whatever they wanted to be, making a clear reference to Barbie, you can be whatever you want to be. Shirori had never seen this kind of freedom, and when the kids were happy today, Ichiro told Shirori that she could start drawing for the manga princess, and at night when Ichiro's brothers were asleep, he left a note in the mini fortune-telling stand they had just made. Right when Shirori found it to talk about what he said yesterday, and before he could say anything, he told her he was happy that she felt that way about him, but he didn't have a good image of relationships and marriages. He wanted to focus more on his family, which were his brothers, and he wouldn't like a forced commitment, so he wanted to annul the engagement as they had discussed, and he believed that was the best for both of them. Shirori told him that was enough, as she noticed something expanding throughout his body. She wanted to be as honest as possible with him and kept telling him that for the moment, his job wasn't stable, and he didn't want someone to bear that burden, but in the end, he told her he had fallen in love and asked her to go out with him. Wow, the first time in an anime that it doesn't take so long to say it. Shirori was very happy to hear that because it unlocked the achievement of getting a partner. The next day, since the weather was nice, Ichiro's brothers prepared everything necessary to go to the zoo and ended up inviting Shirori. Ichiro didn't force her to go because she wouldn't be punished since the zoo was nearby, and they both remembered that they were now dating and blushed when they realized it. So this would be like a date, and that's why she accepted, although it crossed Ichiro's mind whether he should tell his brothers that they were now dating. Only he didn't know how to explain where she came from. If she were one of his brothers, and he tells me that she comes from a village with strange powers, I would clearly think she got into drugs. However, he would look for a way to tell them. When they arrived at the zoo, the most excited was Shirori because she had never seen one, and after taking some photos for memories, they started the tour to see all the animals, and along the way, she saw a couple holding hands and thought she should do the same. Now that they are in a relationship, but she noticed that he had his hands full with his brothers, and when he saw her, he thought she was angry because she wasn't talking to her. She imagined he thought she surely wanted to take her brothers away so he could hold her hand. Then they arrived at a place where they could interact with guinea pigs, which they were petting. 
Shirori imagined Ichiro hugging a giant one, and Fumio had trouble holding one, but with Shiori's advice, he managed to grab the right one. The secret was not to be afraid of them, and she demonstrated by grabbing the toughest one. Then Ichiro saw a child who might have been lost, but when he asked about his parents, it turned out he wasn't lost, and he ended up looking like a kidnapper. But Shirori thought he was very kind, and she would like to be rescued by him. Maki laughed at what happened and noticed that Shirori was blushing for saying that, and her brother was the same. Although they tried to hide it, Ichiro ended up confessing it. He imagined that Maki would look at him with disdain for taking advantage of being her assistant to woo her, but her reaction was very different. She was happy that he had his first girlfriend, and even more so that it was Shirori. Although they clarified that they would behave in the condominium, and Shirori clarified that they wouldn't hold hands because that would be abuse, Maki didn't see anything wrong with it because even elementary school children do it, and they were probably interrupting their date. Only they both said it wasn't like that, and Shirori knelt down to tell them that her brother considered them the most important thing to him and asked if she could spend more time with Ichiro, who promised to take care of all three of them. After saying it, they continued the route of the zoo animals. Ichiro told Shirori that he liked what she said before, and the same happened with her. She was happy with the promise he made. Only when they said it, they filled with embarrassment, but that didn't prevent her from asking to hold his hand. And since she said that would be the best thing in the world, they both did it, and when her brothers noticed they were holding hands, Shirori started crying tears of happiness. Back home when her brothers went to sleep, Shirori wondered what Ichiro liked about her, and as curiosity killed the cat, she went to look for him in his room. But as he didn't answer, she opened the door a little and Chibi appeared to ask if she was looking for Ichiro, and she said yes, but she thought it would be something about work. Only for a moment, she thought that the two of them were dating, although she didn't confirm it, and she told her that he was in the dining room. Then she went to see him and found him sleeping. She stared at him for a while and wanted to touch his neck, but she remembered the time he did it when she was asleep and stopped for a moment because she thought that, even though they were a couple, she shouldn't have that confidence yet. What she did was wake him up to ask if she could stroke his neck. He didn't refuse, and then he told her she didn't have to ask him something like that, only she wanted to maintain good communication with her loved ones, and when she went to bed, she remembered that she wanted to ask him what he liked about her. After that day when Ichiro took the sketches to his editor for the next chapter of his manga, he said he liked how he did it this time expressing the emotions of the characters, and maybe something good had happened to him during this time. When he returned home, he thought he had managed to finish the sketches thanks to Shirori and the visit to the zoo. So he thought he would invite her out again, and he just found her in the hallway, but when he tried to invite her, she diverted the topic and ended up talking about work, like she had a job with the new chapter, and she seemed down when she remembered something. She told Ichiro that she had been helping two mangakas as an assistant. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next part of this beautiful anime. Part 2 will be uploaded this Thursday without fail.